Now, thousands of city residents in informal settlements and those living in the eastern parts of Nairobi are living dangerously. Thousands have erected structures and power lines carrying enough power to flatten a slum and cause unseen destruction of lives and property. So who is behind the illegal building of structures? Well, KTN's Dennis Onsarigo has been doing the digging for us. A toddler is scaling a power transmission line along Kangundu Road, oblivious of the great danger. Unknown to the youngster, 66 kilowatts of power is being hoisted high by the transmission mass from the Kenya Power Utility Plant in Juja. Kilometers away in the heart of Kibera slums, it is not a story of a near miss, but a story with a tragic ending. Three months ago, Alice Okwako's sister fell victim to an all too familiar incident that seems to be dogging residents of the populars in formal settlement. <laughs> The sister, 14 years old, Melissa Onyango Kwako, had slipped into a trench, trying to pull herself out of the mud. She held on to an iron sheet. She was electrocuted. Melissa became one of the youngest victims of illegal power connections in the heart of the slum. The illegal connections here compete with the erection of television areas that dot the skyline here. But there is a more pressing problem. When you take off in an helicopter and head east of Nairobi into Madare slums, the scale of danger occasioned by illegal structures under power lines pans out under the gushing wind that a chopper ride navigates through. From the skies and to an ordinary eye, the power lines running through the slums are just that, power lines. It takes an expert to paint for you a picture of what kind of power the transmission lines carry above and across houses in the slum. The moment you fly on top of Nairobi, you'll understand the kind of danger residents here are subjected to because of the power lines. The encroachment here is out of this world. You understand that an engineer bought this flight tells me that 66,000 kilowatts of, of power is what residents in Madare areas of Kangudo Road are subjected to every single day. Indeed, the danger of a power line falling off and landing on the iron sheets that make up 90% of the housing structures here can be compared to the oil spillage in 2011 in the Sinai slum in the city. Petrol fumes cutting through the polluted air in the slum resulted in a fierce fire that wiped from the face of the earth hundred people in a matter of seconds. Kenya power engineers tell KTN News the destruction this real and present danger will be more. In the event that the, one of those lines, uh, for example, the conductor cuts uh, and uh, for some reason it uh, ignites fire, and if you consider that the houses are so close together, definitely you will see the, a whole slum wiped out eh? and the neighboring estates will also of course eh, be affected yeah so it is really danger really danger electricity is definitely very hazardous if somebody has actually put their house under the the way leaf it is not just the electromagnetic waves that are conducted around the way leaves but the risk of fire most housing structures in the major slums in the city are built close to each other and have the best conductor of electricity, iron sheets.
If power was to travel through the structures, the effect will be instant and in a matter of seconds, fires will erupt. <coughs> making rescue operations impossible and the destruction of lives and property massive. It has become virtually impossible for the power utility company to gain access into the slums and other middle-income areas to service the lines. We have seen two lines now from, uh, from uh, Njunja to Nairobi West. They are passing through Madhare and the other side of Ndandora slums and Mukuru Kwajenga. So basically those are the main lines which are affected by that encroachment, the 66 kV network. And they carry very high voltage. And they carry very, very high voltage, yes. 66 kilovolts, and they are the main supply lines for Nairobi city. Yeah. So in the event they break down, then we have a problem. We will be having a big problem in terms of uh, the time it will take to restore supplies. And of course, if you look at it economically, there is a lot of uh, uh, economic loss. Actually have an impact on the manufacturing sector because it leads into our members having to invest in generators and uh, operate on them for critical processes when the power is unreliable. The other challenge is the fact that in the middle of a production process, if there's a dip in power, it affects that production process and actually leads to the loss of materials or the loss of equipment. So it's, it, is, it is actually a big concern for manufacturers. But just how did the situation get here? We had so many things uh, that were going wrong. Construction is just one of them. The same way we had people building on the really, on the road reserves, the same way we had people uh, building, as you're saying, under the, the, the power wheelies, the same way you see us driving on the roads, overtaking uh, on yellow lines, jumping lights. It seems we had got into such a bad culture as Kenyans in not wanting to do the right thing. And it, so it now manifests itself in all quarters. KTN News has learned individuals have sold off the land to unsuspecting land buyers and list out business premises that fall directly under the high voltage power transmission lines. For instance, along Kangundo Road is a story of many business enterprises that have now mushroomed right under the 66,000 kilowatts of power, a heavy transmission line that can flatten an entire section of Kangundo Road. Take, for instance, housing under construction meters away from the power supplier plant. The housing structure here, now on its second floor, cannot proceed. The structure is directly under a power transmission line here. Unable to divert the power lines, the owner of the building has decided to push it away. Several power lines using wood, a ticking time bomb. But the encroachment on power lines is not the only problem currently facing those in need of power and those supplying the same. Dina Kola is living with a permanent scar. Dina survived an electrocution. Kula mwenye alikuwa karibu kumba na jua vile wa wanafanya. Haka chukua stool haka nipiga na yo. Kunipiga na stool, nika anguka. Kwa anguka, ika niachilia. The same same day, nika enda kwa nyumba, kwanza kupika. Kumbe tena waya nye likuwa kwa nyumba, likuwa affected na yenye likuwa inje. Tena ika, ika nipiga. Kunipiga hivi na maji likuwa pia karibu ya nini moto. Ika nichoma, mpaka... Experts are warning that if something is not done and done fast, the number of city residents in harm's way is increasing by the day. The power lines are there before the people, isn't it? So you're not going to have a scenario where you have people moving under a power line and then having the power line moving. It means you're going to be having the power line moving all the time. So what the, the solution to the particular problem, as it is right now, is those who are under the power wave lifts should just be moved straight away, okay? And that will pass the message that the government is serious in what we call planned development, doing the right thing from the word go. From the skies, the scale of encroachment is alarming as the national and county governments grapple with the rising cases of thousands of residents at the mercy of deadly power in their midst. In what experts are now saying, 
is a man-made tragedy that could strike any time. Denison Sarigo, KTN News.